Ready to start this podcast off? I'm ready. Good morning, everyone. And that is a beautiful bird chirping in the background. And this is the Journey HQ podcast number two. Deuce. Dose. Dose. Not deuce. We're not taking deuces. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I do have to take a deuce. So uh, this is podcast number deuce. Where are you going to take it? Uh, here at the shop. I'm super comfortable. Up you should here. leave it in there. I'm not. Then flush it and say what's going down. Mm. <laughs> be a tiktok <laughs> that is disgusting that is disgusting I i'm remember, sure that's I, out there there's one of our friends that used to do that used to do what send us a video of what's going down i used to do that to people too <laughs> You're stupid. Uh, uh, a friend of ours and i got into a little back and forth battle of the worst going down <laughs> and this was the flip phone era too so the quality was crap this is the content that you're going to hear on the Journey HQ podcast. It's going to be great content all about your um, you bowel know, movements, bowel movements, and every day going on. Car show this weekend. What's that? Uh, this is a car show that a gentleman dropped off. It's going to be calling out all cars, Jeeps, trucks, and bikes across Texas. Gate opens at 12, show starts at 2, awards are at 5. This is going to be at, here in Palestine. At uh, May 14th, Mills on Wheels. So the Mills on Wheels building, 200 North Church Street, Palestine, Texas, 75801. Live music, food trucks, plus more. Uh, I believe this is going for a good cause, the gentleman said. It's going to be for... uh, The food bank? uh, Probably the food bank, if I was to guess. He said something about he had some other... uh, Charitable organizations? Yep, charitable organizations he works with. And... uh, he was trying to get us to come, but unfortunately... We're going to C-10 Nationals. Heck yeah, we're going to C-10 Nationals. Uh, that's going to be a fun one. I've never been, and I started looking online. Uh, the Mailman. The Mailman. The mailman. Oh, the Mailman. The Mailman. The Mailman has a C-10 also. Yeah, the Mailman. He gave us a hood. He sure, Did he? Yeah, he gave us that hood. What hood? The hood that's right behind us. Oh, the with, the with the louvers. The yeah, I was yeah. going to call them levers. Levers, louvers, 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 the louvers, the levers. It's got levers on it. I have not been to a car show in a long time. Last car show I went was laying at the lake and we have a video on that on our YouTube. Oh, I didn't go. You went by Mm-mm. yourself. Yeah, I had to go by my lonesome, man. Yeah. What was I doing? Playing a show? Probably. I don't know. I don't know what you're doing, man. I, I quit going to car shows because I stepped out of the the car world and got into the just being a responsible adult world Mm. and i know going to those things makes me want to do my brain just the gears start spinning and spinning and spinning and i come home and want to build something you're like i can do all that and more right that's how i feel when i see that stuff so when i when i go to that and then come home in the responsible world i was living in I couldn't do that. So I, w- I didn't go just so I didn't have that. Because the internet's a car show in itself. Now but seeing them in person, ooh. So we think totally opposite because when I go and I look at all those cool cars, I'm like, dang, I wonder if that one's for sale. <laughs> no, <laughs> because I, I can't build that. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's going to take a little bit. You can. Well, you hey can man, do it. I tell my daughter all the time, like, how did you get good at soccer? Practice. Yeah, for real. You know, like you're not... You're not going to be a master fabricator in a week. Yeah. Uh, you can and I'm not a master fabricator by any stretch of the imagination. I don't even pretend in my own mind that I am. You can tell I'm not a master fabricator if you're watching some of my build videos. It takes four days to build a dang awning. It's just focus, my friend. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. A lot of other uh, moving parts that goes on up here at the Journey HQ and uh, that take away and I have to stop and go do something else or film or get on a phone call or Mm -hmm. figure out taxes for the building and all the properties and all that stuff. I mean, it's just always something to handle. Oh yeah. There's There's always always something to handle. Yes. So being a business owner is not all fun and games all the time. It is freaking work all the time, all the time. There's always something that's going to need your attention. Mm -hmm. That's going to need you to stop whatever you're doing and Figure it out. Yeah. There's your phone call. I promise we'll get a phone call probably here in about 20 minutes. Or I, I saw my phone light up out of the corner of my eye. Did you? Yeah. I don't, 
I'm going to flip it over so I don't even see that. Just go away, distractions. So something cool I did uh, this week is yesterday, actually, I went to Westwood High School for the Shark Tank. It was the second year in a row that I've done that. And so basically the kids have all semester to come up with an idea for a food truck. And then they get to um, put out a business plan. Uh, come up with all their expense, like how much it's going to cost them to get a food truck, how much is, they're going to need in materials, and kind of bring that uh, idea to light on uh, different food trucks. And it was pretty cool. So we did uh, me and Scott and Lee, Scott Pfeiffer from Pfeiffer Logic, Lee uh, from Jocelyn's Donuts, and another, I can't remember that other lady's name, but she owns Basket Case. It's a, it's a uh, gift shop there in Westwood. Uh, everybody knows uh, Scott, Scott Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Logic. Quick Drone Pro. Quick Drone Pro. And everybody knows Lee from Jocelyn's Donuts. And then, I can't remember that lady's name. I saw Scott yesterday. Did you see Scott's name? Scott yesterday? Yes, sir. He you was sitting in front of the karate place waiting for the doors to open so he could go. Y'all keep. see each other all the time. Just I driving. see Scott in traffic. At least once a day. At the very bare minimum, once a day. But back to what I was talking about. That lady, she owns Basket Case. It's a gift shop there in Westwood. I believe it's next to uh, that new Fox House oh, bar and grill. Is it Fox House or I'm, Fox Den? I think it's Fox House. Mm. It went, looks nice. From it the is, road, it looks nice. Yeah, it looks really nice. And I went in there um, for lunch by myself the other day just to see what it was about. And super nice. Uh, service was great. Uh, atmosphere was nice. They had the the music was on point, dude. They were playing like the Toadies and mm, uh, Backslider. Yeah, man, they were playing. Do, 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 do. Yeah, just all sorts of music. Like their playlist was almost like some of my playlist. Mm-hmm. It was good. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but Basket Case, all four of us. There was four of us, and the kids presented their ideas to us. And then we got to decide if we are going to invest or not invest. And I tell you that some of the kids, so there was five food trucks, and they were all in high, most of them were in high school. There was one group that was in eighth grade. And I'm telling you, those eighth graders were awesome. They did a really good job at coming up with the business plan and their food truck idea. But the winner was, I believe they were freshmen, two young girls that came up with a food truck idea of, Dang, what was their food truck idea? That's what I was going to ask you. Aside from all the business planning aspects of it, like logistically, the overall idea of the truck, were how many of the ideas were like... Original. Out of the ordinary, original, like something that if you were the business planner would be good ideas. Well, okay, so there was a sandwich food truck. Okay. And it was uh, they were going to use locally sourced ingredients. They won, I believe, they were the second winner. They were mm-hmm. they were runner up, and uh, their the the idea wasn't the greatest because it's a sandwich food truck. Um, I feel like that me and Scott were talking, and sandwiches is going to be a hard thing to make money on. You know, you've got a lot of uh, fresh ingredients that you always got to keep, and you have to already competing with people at their house. You can make a sandwich anywhere. You're well, and you're with competing sub- with Magnolia. You're competing with Subway. You're competing with Subs and Dogs. Mm-hmm. You're competing with every sandwich shop that's already operational. You're going to have to have something that is Unique. a special sandwich. Right. They didn't have any kind of like special sandwich to make it, you know, like, oh, that's where I'm going. But, you know, but I tell you, those kids right there spent a lot of time. They actually made food trucks out of cardboard. Mm-hmm. And um, some of them. Look like they threw them together like 30 minutes before. These kids right here, I've got a picture on my phone, which is awesome. Here, let me show you this picture. Was there anything unique about? Well, it ain't no food truck, man. Well, that's pretty cool. You got to see the detail. Dang. Yeah. The detail on this was amazing. They went and got all these little uh, bottles, like miniature bottles, mm. and they built out refrigerators inside. No other compared to this one. So, was it their presentation that made them win? They, they got second. Okay. They got second. Um, but it was just their overall... Like, we graded them on like five things. Original idea, business plan. And this was just yesterday, folks. So, I uh, I think I have dementia. Uh, <laughs> so, there was... Dang, what were all the five things that we... Mm, I'm not sure. I'm just curious about the ideas themselves. Okay, like so sandwich shop. Sandwich shop. 
there was tarts and stuff. What is tarts and stuff? Like pop tarts? That'd be cool <laughs> if they could make custom pop tarts. But mm. no, they were going to make. Uh, you ever put butter on a pop tart after it's real hot? And, I've mm. never put butter on a pop tart. Oh my tart. God. You take your pop tart and heat it up, put your little butter on top, let it melt over it. Holy stuff. <laughs> pop tarts and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I know who won. Popping off. What is popping off? They were popping off, man. What were they popping off? Tops? They were, they were popping off cake pops. Cake pops. Cake pops. My wife would be their best customer. Yeah, and they had a variety of cake pay, uh, pay pops, cake pops, um, but just their, um, they owned it. When they got up in front of their, uh, up in front of us, mm-hmm. they owned it, man. They were they were on point, talking about everything, knowing when we asked them a question, they knew what they were talking about. You know, there was some questions we asked, but they were they were really. You know, they they were uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were they made a good presentation. Yeah, they were uh, impression. Good impression. Yeah, good impression. Uh, as far and like, I was like, what do y'all really plan on doing when y'all are y'all going to college? And they were like, yeah, we're going to college. They're like, and they were freshmen, I think. And they were like, we're already in college. I'm like, gangster. Mm. <laughs> so they, I was like, do y'all plan on owning a business? Because I think y'all could do it. Really, they were doing, like they they came with it, dude. It was awesome. So the cake pop was number one. What was the tart thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like tart, like can't like yeah, the little tarts, little like, little, you know, little pie things. Yeah, a little pie thing. Okay. And then they did. They had a whole bunch of other stuff. So their business is called Tarts and Stuff. But then they had um, the tarts. They had souffle pancakes because they said they couldn't find souffle pancakes here in town. Um, they did sweets and was there sparkly? Yeah. So their whole theme was sparkly. Glitter, edible glitter mm. in the drinks. They were going to do drinks. They were going to be kind of be like sips. You'd be like, no, baby, I was at Tarts and stuff. I promise I wasn't at the <laughs> Gentleman's Club. <laughs> there is glitter all over my mouth, and I promise you, this is not uh, from anywhere else. So we got sandwiches, we got strippers, and we got cake pops. <laughs> I mean, tarts and sparkly cake pops. T- sparkly tots. Tarts. 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 Tater tots. Okay, yeah. so that's three. What else? Um, there was Slurps. Slurps. So, so like a Slurpee store? Uh, I believe it was drinks. It was mm. Slurps. Just drinks. Mm, and, that uh, sounds kind of like a rip yeah. on sips. Slurps and sips. They, they were, should build be, right across the street. They were doing uh, milk tea. Milk tea was one of the things. Mm, and uh, Milk tea? Jocelyn's Donuts sells milk, milk tea. Some kind of milk tea. Um, that sounds like it doesn't go together. We should probably go get a milk tea. I want to have uh, Lee, that owns Joslyn's, on this podcast once we get it up and going and we start getting guests because, dang, that lady is amazing. She's a businesswoman. Business, business, business. Like, she's uh, she's awesome. Okay. I, like, envy her. Do you? A little bit. She's hustling, huh? Hustling, dog. Make you see, jelly? Yeah. When I see people hustling, I'm like, why am I not hustling that hard? And you hustle pretty, like, that's how I feel hanging out with you, like, uh, Chase, Yeah, I can't keep up. Uh, Yeah, I don't know, just other people doing stuff makes me want to do more. Mm -hmm. Just motivates me, like, why am I not doing more of that? And, like, she's got into real estate. Mm -hmm. She owns a whole bunch of real estate, and I'm like, dang, I wish I'd have done that. You can still do it. Yeah, it's a smart move. It's hard to do it right now, like, everything's super expensive, but uh, real estate's the next thing I want to do. Get into the thing, that real estate. All right, circling back. Oh, we yeah. got sandwiches. Sandwiches. Sparkly tart. tarts. No, no. Yeah, sparkly tarts. Cake pops. Pop Slurpees. Slurpees. One more. Come on, brain. Do your thing. Come on, brain. <sighs> Think of things. Come Man. on, brain. What were the eighth graders? I wish I'd have brought notes. I took more pictures. It's okay. So, from your perspective, which one of those would do the best? Not their business plans, just their product that they're trying to offer. That's why I'm asking about the unique idea side of things. Because the idea is mm-hmm. half of the battle. Yeah. You know, you got to ha- have the dream before you can start trying to build the dream. Does that make sense? Honestly, I would combine a couple. Hmm? At, at the cake pops, popping off. Popping off. Sounds cool. Popping off, and they need 
popping but, off needs a food truck like with like um sparkly paint on it and cool wheels and yeah. like music playing like mm. popping off you know what i'm yeah. saying like world star hip-hop cake <laughs> pops but world star cake pops i think another idea instead of a food truck for popping off have you seen the apple lady i've heard about the apple lady i don't know who she is or whatever but she was at uh twisted sales out in like nine minutes and done so on nose to the house yeah she's done she's packing up leaving she makes her apples she gets them all done wrapped up they're all special apples like super unique dipped well, apples and she comes sets up private events like a pop-up yeah pop-up shops right and then she sells out and she's gone to the house man i like the idea of because so the barbecue industry seemed to do that's where i first noticed this where they make a certain amount of briskets every day Mm -hmm. and when they're gone they're gone yeah so you don't have to worry about pleasing everybody. It's first come, first serve. You know how much you're going to sell every single time. Mm-hmm. And if you sell that in 20 minutes or it takes you six hours, either or. So, um, I mean, she goes in, sells these apples. They must be good. Mm-hmm. But 10, 15 minutes, she's sold everything she's made and she's going home. That's what I heard. I don't know. This I've heard that said. too. Yeah. So I've heard mean, it, it from sounds, multiple people. Sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. Maybe so, you should have her on. We should have her on. So, the Apple lady? Do you know like, what it's called? I, I have no idea. Mm. I can get the information. I can mm. figure it out. Mm. But I see this podcast. we going into interviewing some other people that are doing some awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, um, kind of getting their perspective on what's going on in the town. Yeah. You know, because there's some, there's some cool stuff going on in Palestine, Texas. Mm-hmm. That's where we're located, based out of. That's where the HQ, the Journey HQ is, is that, uh, what's HQ stand for? Headquarters. Okay. What do you think the HQ stood for? I don't know. <laughs> I'll get home quick. <laughs> you see what Chase has got to work with. We've got to deal with some stupid stuff all day. It's fun, though. Don't you enjoy it? Don't I liven up every situation with my positive attitude? It's great. It's great. Yeah. we got a lot of work to do. So we've been working on the 84C10. We've gotten a lot of progress done on that. I feel like we're on the home stretch with that truck. Like, yeah. we're a week away from, like, making it look pretty. We've said that. Uh, well, I mean, I'm constantly setting goals for myself. <laughs> but you and know, failing at those goals and then resetting them until I succeed. But again, takes a lot of time and effort to we've got a lot of stuff going on we got a podcast now that we have to stop and do um which is fun i like i like this we do that and then we come in every morning and sit around for 40 minutes Mm -hmm. and discuss things that we need to be doing differently looking at what we've done previously and seeing how we can change it what can we do to improve to improve we're constantly trying to improve that takes time it does. Working on the vehicles takes time. Yes. And every little project, it's just us. It's just you yeah. and I. It's just you and me. Just the two of us. Making seat tins in the shop. That was good. I don't know. I just That's that's your new song. We should record that. Uh, I'm definitely not a singer. That's good. That makes it better. <laughs> I could be the one of the guys that goes up on American Idol and just bombs. Mm. That, that could be Simon good. Cowell talking trash. Yes, because people would. I do not sing. So we're going to get out here. We did get an air conditioner for this room. Oh, yes. It's super steamy in here. We will be putting that in. Unfortunately, Mr. Cool is the... I was going to go with a mini split because we have two rooms right here. This is the smaller of the offices, and we have another one right next to us that we haven't built out yet. In order to Mr. Cool DIY mini split, you can actually get them at Brawley's Ace Hardware here in town. They even have one set up on display. But unfortunately, they sold out of the... Uh, Three room mm-hmm. units is like a what are those called? The three Head. air handler mm-hmm. air handlers, and um, they ran out of those. And they're coming out with a newer model with a better warranty, you know, just upgrading it. Mm-hmm. And it'll be out next month. So, in the meantime, I went ahead and ordered a bought a $269 window unit, mm-hmm. and we're going to try to install that in this window. We're going to have to build some brackets. We'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it work. So Brawleys won't sell you the floor model? The floor model is only for... A, they don't have the uh, 
Oh, a two head. Multi, your multi, multi unit. Okay. They've only got the single unit right now. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I just can't get it, man. Mm-hmm. That's fine. But if you have one room, I think they got you hooked up. And then, like, they've got four four rooms, four heads. You could get four air handlers. What's cool about a mini split is you can have an air handler in each room, and then you can adjust the temperature. So makes it freaking efficient. Right. So, like, if you leave out of your living room and need to go to your bedroom, you can turn that up in the living room and turn your air conditioner down in the bedroom. Um, we're going to start. We, we know so many people with cool rads. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start bringing some of those rads in, giving the details on the specifics, specifics on um, what the vehicles look like. Um, the owners are going to be able to talk about their cars, tell us what they've done to them. We're yeah. going to do some nice rolling shots and just make little showcase videos on yeah. other people's cool rides. Yeah, talking about all the modifications they've made mm-hmm. and how they did it or who did it. Like, because not everybody builds their own cars. Uh, like me, previous, I don't think sure. I, I've never built a car. Well, you can't. Not everybody can do everything. It's okay to no. to buy something. Heck yeah. You know, it is. I mean. I built my house, but not everybody built their own house. No. A lot of people didn't build their houses. Most of the people don't build their own house. But they can have a car, they can have a home and do things to it and pay people to do things to it to make it unique and make it their own. And the same thing happens with cars. That's what I've been previously doing. Mm -hmm. 54. There is nothing wrong with that. Bought it and had it customized. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So, you know, we can showcase and figure out who, what, what all they've done to it and who all uh, has done stuff to that car mm-hmm. and kind of just showcase it. And then yep. it'd be awesome to be able to go back and watch all these videos, of all these cool rides that our friends and people that we know have. Yeah. And I, I feel like the owners of those vehicles are going to enjoy it too, because it's going to be a little, I would enjoy that. Oh Yeah. I would yeah. enjoy to be able to go on someone else's <clears throat> show, you know, like video. It, just thinking about having a video of my car. Right. Well, and you can tell somebody, if you don't have your car with you, oh, what do you drive? Oh, I have this. Well, go check it out here. You can go look at it. You know what I'm saying? On the Journey HQ. YouTube Not the channel. podcast. I was going to say the podcast. I know you were. Go watch this on the Journey HQ YouTube channel. And we can go ride in these cars, too. Like, I think about a few of these people who have some cars that... I know who I'm not riding with. Very interesting rides. I know one person that I don't want to ride with. David McClendon. It's crazy. I rode with him in a dang Razor. So, we went to David's house. David and David. We went to Dave and Dave's. They've got these stupid side-by-sides. Turbocharged. Turbocharged with upgrades. And, dude, he... And and Dave... David uh, Ryder... Has the longest had the longest driveway. He just sold his house, and had the longest driveway, all paved, parts concrete, parts asphalt, and it's so long. Mm-hmm. And Dave, me and Dave were he's doing something. They're getting ready to go on a ride, and he's installing his turbo piping and all this stuff. And he's like, "Jump in, I got it done." And we jump in and we haul butt down this road, and I and and it's going fast. He scares me. And then we get to the end of the road, and he goes, hey, uh, reach in that glove box and give me that uh, red key. I was like, what's this? He said, that's the go fast key. I said, no, we just went fast. I was Mm -hmm. like, we don't need to go any faster. And he puts that key in, and we got up to like 90 miles an hour within a snap. It was Mm -hmm. crazy. And I was like, I'm not ever riding with you again. Dave is one of those guys I feel like should have been like a Formula One driver. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? He has no care. He's like, I well, don't and, care. Yeah, I mean, he, he is... No fear. Fearless, yes. Yeah. And he he can drive. I'm kind of like that when I get behind the wheel, too, because I feel like I can drive. Which, that's the problem, though, is you're in control. Uh, yeah. It's like when I ride in the boat with you, it terrifies me. <laughs> it terrifies me. Most people... For starters, every boat you've ever owned has been a chine walking machine. So this one doesn't chine walk. I guess. I don't know. The legend? No. No, no chine walking. Okay. No well, chine walking. All the other boats. The Nitro never chine walked. That's a lie. The Nitro chine walked? Maybe. Or maybe I was just scared. Probably just scared. Maybe I was my brain. I only have was two speeds. Walking. There's two speeds to me. Off and boat. on. Down to the floor. Here, there, and gone. Yeah. That's the only speeds I know when it comes to a bass boat. And uh the Triton, that was my first 
big boat. I had a, a Procraft mm-hmm. 17 footer, mm-hmm. 115, jumped up to the, the Triton. PR 196, 19 and a half foot boat with a 200 Mercury on it. Yellow and white. Yellow and white. That thing was the chine walkingest boat you've ever seen. I can't like it. When I went to test drive it in Marshall, it was chine walking crazy. But the guy knew how to drive it. Yeah. And you uh, had to learn how to drive it. You had to bump the steering wheel. It did like just barely bump the steering wheel and it would not chine walk. But it would go 70 plus miles an hour with a 200 on it. It was one of their fastest boats, I believe they said. You know, for the 200 in that size, it was pretty mm-hmm. dang fast. That sucker, man, it was sketchy. Mm-hmm. My Skeeter will go 70 plus and not chine walk. Yeah. And the Nitro, I don't think it chine walked too bad, but it never, I think the fastest I've ever had it was like 71, mm-hmm. maybe on a good day. It didn't matter if I loaded that boat down with every piece of tackle I ever owned in it or took everything out. Yeah, I've done both. I've been in the boat by myself with minimal gas, minimal gear. And I feel like I can get the same speed with all my gear and a passenger. See, when you had a passenger, it changes a little bit on my, especially my my legend, dude. That thing is so big and so wide, mm-hmm. and that's the biggest platform bass boat I've been on. Like it's huge. the the deck on that boat is ridiculous. You can land a helicopter mm-hmm. on that thing. Um, too bad they don't rip rip legend boats. They don't make them anymore. Mm. So I got the, actually the last. Legend boat. You had the owner of Legend's boat, right? Yeah, I do have the owner of Legend's boats. His name is uh, Dang. I had it on the tip of my tongue too. Hmm. Got it on the ti- It was on the title of the deal. But anyways, it was his personal boat. They built it for him. Pretty cool boat. The only one with no carpet for that year. Sea deck. It's not sea deck. What is it? It looks similar. It's similar. But um, it's harder. Have you seen the guys porous. doing their sea yes. deck themselves where you can order the material and cut it with a router, cut your own patterns in it? Really? Mm-hmm. It's pretty mm-hmm. neat. They're building little jigs for their router so mm-hmm. they can cut the lines or cut the diamond patterns and all that. I've been, my brain has been going crazy thinking about it. Because you won't sea deck in your boat. After, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a game changer, man. I don't see why any bass boat has carpet. Carpet is dumb. So if you're a, a, a boat manufacturer and you're listening to our podcast, that is probably, you're probably not listening to our podcast right away. I don't care whether they're going to listen. But they need to know that all bass boats don't need to have carpet. That's the dumbest thing in the world. Carpet belongs, doesn't even belong in a house. So I have a question for you. How, um, because we live in Texas and it's hot as hell. And I've never been in your boat in the summertime that I can it's remember. I never, I never not wear shoes. Okay, but I cannot. I, I like to be barefoot. I cannot be barefoot in a boat because there is too many hooks around, and I'm I not getting. But how hot does it get compared to carpet? I mean, it's it's light gray. It's like almost white. Yeah, but you're. It feels like it's got that texture that would get hot. I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Hmm. I don't ever burn my. Laying on it. Okay. I don't ever feel like I'm burning myself. Mm. Black carpet? Dumb. Dumb. And I was thinking in my brain last night about a build and black sea deck. I know they have it, but I bet it would be hot too. Oh, there is a boat that's all black Mm -hmm. with all black sea deck. And I'm like, that is the dumbest boat I've ever seen. I mean, I want a black boat. And it would look amazing. But I think black on a boat would not be as bad as white. Well, the problem with white, my boat's white and black, but the, the bulk of the interior of the boat's white. Mm-hmm. White gets so dirty. Especially all that scum. And Road grime. Like, if you if it rains, either before you go or after you go, good. your boat looks like you poured pepper-colored water in it. Yeah. Let's see what else we got to talk about. Call to action. Listen to our podcast is the call to action. Listen to our podcast. Listen to us ramble on about nonsense and fishing and cars and car shows and all sorts of crap. Um, If you want to be on our spotlight. Yeah, if you want to bring your vehicle, if you have a cool vehicle, um, shoot us a message with some pictures of your car and some information. And we will definitely give it a look and try to schedule you in to feature your vehicle. And this is going to be a kind of an ongoing thing. We're going to go to C10 Nationals this weekend also. So we're going to shoot some, some spotlights on some vehicles there. We're going to shoot a whole YouTube video about C10. Is it C10 Nationals? It's C10 Nationals, okay. the big one. I'm just trying, the big one? That's what it says on okay. their flyer. Cool. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. We're going to try to get a lot of footage. 
um, of all the goings on and the vendors and the activities that are happening this coming weekend. But we want to kind of do the same thing with people's vehicles here at the shop. So if you do have um, a cool ride, shoot us a message. Let us know. We'll see what we can do about getting you on. And you can probably the best place to DM us on is Facebook. Uh, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. We get all the messages yeah. there. Yeah, so, so wherever shoot you want a message. Wherever you want to send us a message at. Um, there is one vehicle in particular that I want to I want to see. What's that? It's uh this guy on um Oh, the Suburban you like so suburban. much? Suburban. Man, I love that Suburban. Ever so low is his name on Instagram and uh he's got a rad like uh, late eighties square body suburban mm-hmm. might be, they made this the suburban in the nineties though right the until square body? ninety one or ninety two I think his might be that year mm. uh, it's somewhere in there but dude it's so cool that's when they went to the horizontal headlight pattern yeah you'll have to see I can't remember which one it is but it's awesome I, it, it's in the uh, land of the lake video mm. and so I talked oh, to the him blue and white one. Is it uh, blue and white? No, it's like cream and got some blue. It's all original. Mm. That's why I love it so much because it's original paint and it's like patinaed perfection. It's it's very nice original paint. That's cool. Um, but anyways, guys, we appreciate you watching and listening to the podcast. We're doing what makes us happy. Every day. Every day. And uh, I, I suggest you do the same thing. And... Uh, Check us out on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Yep, that's where we're at right now. Um, Soon we're going to have this podcast on other platforms so you can stream it without the video. Mm -hmm. Just listen. Um, But we appreciate you watching. If you made it this far, you're a soldier. You're a soldier. So thank you. All right, y'all have a good day, and we'll see you later. Do what makes you happy. Oh, show.